this is Dr. Corey Moss on Looking and Being Your Best. I am going to talk today about a, a cosmetic injection filler that I have mixed feelings about because of the long history of silicone and small synthetic beads that have been injected in humans for uh, since the 1960s when polymers were invented. And, um, you know, the early days of breast implants when they had inadequate shells and the shells ruptured and people got all these inflammatory responses and things like that, which, by the way, have shown that there's no immunologic or other cancer-causing other problems with that. But it did cause a lot of problems with local inflammation and these beads getting little tiny particles getting integrated in the tissues and cr causing inflammatory responses or what we call biofilms where there's a very low grade almost infection in the interface between on the microscopic level the interface between the implant material itself and the tissues and so this this concept of biofilm is not limited to the synthetic injectables but the great promise of these the great promise is that they last forever and that's also the great demise because anything that we can't completely remove or that the body doesn't completely dissolve by itself in a way of metabolism or hydrolysis or whatever, make them dangerous in my mind and make them hard to use except in specific circumstances where the worst case scenario would be that we would do a local tissue excision. And when I say that, a good example are ac pitted acne scars. We call them ice pick or bathtub, different types of acne scars. But if you're just lifting up an acne scar, putting a tiny couple drops of either silicone, medical silicone, not, not the kind you get at Home Depot, medical silicone, or Bellafil, which is polymethyl methacrylate, which is basically the same chemical formula, plexiglass. But these are beads that are microscopic, and they're actually, over the years, improved them. They're no longer charged because these glass and processing, these little tiny millions and millions of beads would rub against each other and actually create enough friction to create a charge. And now they get rid of the charge that's created by friction before they put them in their carrier. And I talked before about carriers because the little beads themselves are solid. They couldn't be injected. So there's a couple of versions of this, but collagen or hyaluronin can be used as a carrier for these microscopic beads. And the hyaluronins we've talked about before, the HA, HA fillers. And so those carrier molecules bring the little beads along. Obviously the carrier molecules or gelatin in the case of, of the Radius product we talked about, which by the way does dissolve completely by itself. So it's in a completely different category but the permanent synthetic injectables, and specifically the microparticulate permanent synthetic injectables, including Bellafil, have a role that is an important one in that it, they are great for isolated small defects, which can be lifted up permanently by their use. And the beauty of what they do is they stimulate the body to make collagen like all the particles do, and that stimulus never goes away because the particle never goes away. So again, that's a benefit and a hazard. It, when I see patients that come in that have had silicone in their lips, I've seen a handful of them actually, in fact, number in the lectures that I've seen over the years of silicone injected lips that look really nice. I've also seen disasters and unfortunately, even if it was one in a thousand patients that had the disaster, that would be way too many for me and uh, not being able to remove it when you're injecting silicone or Bellafil or any product in the lip to me is uh, too much of a risk and it's your face so when people ask me gosh I wish I had something that lasted forever I like well not first of all nothing lasts forever number one number two your face changes over times over time so it probably is better that you come in every the ideal range would be a two or three year interval of treatment where these products are metabolized and then you come in for a touch-up and even if it's one year I think that's within the realm of doable and doing a little touch-up so we're getting there I will say the exciting part of the technology that's happening today and we're involved in most many of the clinical trials for these injectable fillers and the botulinum toxins is we're coming to a 
a, a, an era, a phase of this evolution where we will probably be able to do Botoxins, the Botoxin, whether it's Dysport or ZMN or Bellotero, uh, or, or, uh, Botox, ZMN, uh, Dysport, there's, there's a, the new product, Juvenu is coming up, that's Evelis, we'll talk about that in a little bit, and um, a couple other ones too that are going to be very fast acting uh, products, which are all exciting. So, I mean, it was the, these new products come along, and what we're learning too is that we were working on the very low end of the dose response curve, and one of the new ones from a company here in South San Francisco has showed with a 40 unit dose that they could get not everybody or not even half of the subjects, but they could get some fair number of subjects out to as far as six months. And so with, with the higher dose. So our studies have shown with, with uh, botulinum toxin A, that's the class of, of all of them, and specifically with Xeomin, which I'll talk about in a little bit, is important. Um, that we can get better duration, much longer duration, if we use a higher dose. And so these products are great, and that's the era we're coming into. It's exciting to have long duration products, but they have to have a limit to them if we want them to be optimized for our patients. And I think that's where these products that are micro particulate uh, fill a niche that is unique if it's used in small droplet formation in specific areas as was described by Dr. Richard Webster who is one of the teachers of most of my teachers and, um, and not used in a massive injection sort of format where I've seen lots of complications with that from coming from Asia and you know all over the states so I would tell everyone to use great caution when using synthetic injectables and for those specific indications like small car, scar formation or very isolated depressions, they're, they're great when in, used in the correct hands. As always, I'm happy to answer any questions you have about cosmetic injections or fillers or botulinum toxins or anything in the world of the facial plastic and aesthetic surgery. And it's my pleasure to help you stay and keep looking your best.